In this video, we're going to talk about something that I believe uh, you should know about. If you are in the aviation industry or you are trying to get into the industry, you should know the challenges that are facing the aviation industry in 2024. We're kind of halfway through the year, right? And I think it's important that we understand that a lot of these concepts that we'll talk about in this video or the information that we share in this video are really things that are often dynamic. And that is why it is very important for you to be in tune and up to date with the information that I'm sharing. But I hope that you're able to see the similarities and how these factors that we're going to talk about have influenced the aviation industry. This is so important because, again, if you're planning to have a career in this industry, you want to know what is developing, what is happening, and what will likely impact you. Before we get into it, if you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for tuning in again. It goes a long way when you come back, when you drop those likes. So please, if you haven't dropped those likes, do that. And of course, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to share with you is this article that I found. As you can see, it says eight key challenges for the aviation sector. And this is from the uh, GMI Insights. I believe it's a research company. The first one, starting from the uh, top right, uh, we have cyber attacks emerge. Have we seen that lately? All right. Have we seen that lately? I'm sure you all can say maybe because the recent infrastructure breakdown, we can call it. All right. Even though it wasn't a cyber attack. It shows the potential loopholes in the industry, all right? And if those loopholes are really probed by those bad guys, in this case, hackers and, you know, people with bad intentions, things can really go bad. I'm not sure if you guys have seen in the article, Delta is actually trying to recover about $500 million, you know, from CrowdStrike and Microsoft. Again, that's one major impact that these things can have in terms of the infrastructure that we that is currently being used. Not all, not all airlines were impacted or affected by this IT issue, okay? But the goal here is that it shows how reliant these systems are and how tied to the hard to one source, and that's a problem. The next thing that we have here, uh, second top right here, is the global passenger congestion. As we can tell, this is something that is really going on and uh, I think a lot of air airports are trying to expand, you know, right, to increase capacity. And if you look at the world's biggest airports, they keep on getting crowded. And a lot of airlines are trying to divest from that type of approach where, you know, urban spoke approach, not all airlines follow that. Some airlines, especially the low-cost carriers, are trying to do more direct flights or at least avoid the congested areas. Uh, but the truth here is that this poses a challenge. Now, this isn't the main Point, okay, this isn't the biggest challenge just yet. All right, as we go on, uh, we have inadequate airline infrastructure. Uh, we kind of know that already. Some airlines are struggling. Some of them are not adequately adequately staffed. All right, um, this is still something going on, especially uh, coming out of COVID. And now a lot of airlines, the bigger airlines, are making a lot of profit, whereas the low cost carriers are struggling. You know, we have in the U.S. especially airlines like JetBlue. Airlines like Spirit, Frontier, they are quite they are struggling with the approach, even Southwest, by the way. All of them are struggling to turn things around. And mind you, the cost of labor has increased, inflation has increased. We have all those factors also plaguing the industry. All right. Next one here is lack of skilled professionals. Now, this is something that I believe is worth mentioning here because if you have an industry where in order for you to get into it, you have this huge amount of cost that is associated or that is uh, put on individuals to come up with, it can be a problem. So we have that problem going on. The second thing that we need to keep in mind is that loans are not getting cheaper. Interest rates are currently high, so a lot of people are trying to stay away from loans as much as possible. Now, not all cadet programs, even though this channel focuses on talking about cadet programs, and I try to focus on those cadet programs that are generally free. In this case, you, can, you have to apply, you have to go through the rigorous process, and if you can get through, You'll be sponsored. Those are the ones I try to focus on. But I also know that not all cadet programs are available to everybody. And this is often a problem in developing countries, Africa, India. And mind you, India is not really a developing country. It's quite developed, all right? But the point here is um, Africa is a big part of this issue where they don't provide any programs to aspiring pilots. You have to have your money to get through it. And some other parts of the world, all right? The key thing here is that 
those countries would end up having to rely on foreign individuals to operate their airplanes as time goes on because of the cost of, you know, becoming a pilot, training them, and then getting the job. So those are generally areas that are affecting those countries. On the other hand, there are some other countries like Europe, America, Canada, all these developed countries where, or Western places anyway, where you have a lot of infrastructure for training, you have accessibility to funds and different programs to aid people in becoming pilots. Those areas will generally have the issue that is uh, on the flip side. Right now in the industry, a lot of these airlines are actually overstaffed. And when I say overstaffed, for so many reasons, one, you know, some of the airplanes are not being delivered as promised, right? Because of technical issues and develop uh, design issues that you're going through, engine issues that you're having. And then you then have the uh, problem of uh, overhiring going on in some industries as well, where they've hired too many people and now things are not really going as planned. So there's that, uh, I guess, dichotomy. I mean, that's the right word. But the point is, there's that two side issues, right? Some countries are lacking individuals or qualified people, while some people actually have too many of them uh, for the environment that they are currently operating in, all right? The next one, impact of international conflict. Are we seeing that right now? All right. Again, please leave your comments, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. All right. Because at the end of the day, all these things are things that you are probably experiencing right now or you've seen in the news and you can tell, like, oh, this makes sense. These are big issues that are currently plaguing the industry. And as we know, conflicts going on in different parts of the world, Israel, for example, right, and all that is, is a big deal. Or even Ukraine is, is another one, right? And these things are sometimes it, it, it just one more point from breaking the whole thing, right? And next thing you have the next war or whatever. Now, the next one here says the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, for most part for the airlines, this has turned out to be well good thing because a lot of um, passengers are now flying. A lot of people are returning to the aviation industry to fly and things of that nature. And I think this is more of a good thing for the industry for most part. And I, I, I don't think any airline will complain about having too many passengers at this point. Now, we have fuel cost uncertainty. And I think this is really the biggest factor. And we can tie fuel cost with the focus on climate change. These two are really the biggest factors that are plaguing the industry. And why is that? The reason is because if you look at the industry, the aviation industry relies on fuel to function at this point anyway. We're trying to go into the electric world and, you know, but that is not something that it will, we would achieve anytime soon. But one of the missions and goals of the aviation industry is to save fuel, which would help increase profitability. And the second thing is to help reduce emissions. All right. And in order to achieve that, the aviation industry has come up with the goals of reaching net neutral carbon emission by 2030, and they have the goal of reaching net zero emission by 2050. Those two goals are things that the airline industry have been working towards. However, it appears that things are hitting a snag, and I'm going to share something with you right here. And this is from, this is actually today at the recording of this video, airlines dump climate goal opens door for industry to follow. All right, now the goal here is this. If you think about what is going on, and if you read it, this is Air New Zealand uh, decision to ditch its 2030 emissions target suggests more airlines will also have to confront a harsh reality. There's simply not enough SAF or sustainable aviation fuel or new, more efficient aircraft. Now the goal here is that, uh, you know, the one of the plans that airlines have adopted in reaching that goal over time is to buy newer airplanes, improve, uh, retrofit their engines with newer engines that are more fuel efficient, designing the airplanes to be more fuel efficient, all these factors. And if you go down the lines, even to the low cost carriers, they've gone as far as changing the type of seats they operate with to have lighter seats and reduce weight, which means you burn less fuel. And of course, these airlines are always pushing for single engine taxi, flying efficient routes, uh, staying as efficient as possible. And then they started introducing things like carbon offset, carbon offsetting goals. Like, for example, passengers can buy their ticket 
and buy a certain amount of uh, carbon offset associated with it. So, you know, if you're really environmentally uh, inclined and if you're the type of person that cares about the environment, you're likely to want to pay the airlines a certain amount of money to help offset the cost of your travel. At the end of the day, the airlines are ditching that effort because they feel like a lot of those results are not being uh, heard or, or gotten. They're not getting the results that they want. And the next thing to that is that SAF itself isn't readily available. It's something that goes through a lot of processes, whether through the production. And mind you, SAF can be gotten from different sources. It's not the typical jet A fuel that we have. And the problem with that now is you're unable to reach that goal. Now, some designs have come up with, or some scientists have come up with the ability to mix SAF with Jet A so that at least you kind of reduce emission. But those things are still well under development in a way that um, it's not common just yet. And the problem with that now is the cost of actually using SAF is almost four times, according to the data anyway, four times more than what JD costs, which means airlines are likely not wanting to or are likely not going to use SAF for a very long time until it is as cheap or maybe as, uh, you know, when it costs the same as the as the regular JD fuel. Now, this is always a problem. This is always going to be a thing. And that's why an airline like Air New Zealand is ditching its 2030 goals. Now, not just Air New Zealand. A lot of airlines have also ditched some of their efforts in reaching that goal. And to be honest with you, I feel like it's going to be tough to reach that goal uh, because you have, you just don't have the infrastructure um, everywhere. And mind you, every airline will try to do its own part. And that's the goal here. Every airline should try to meet its own goal. But overall, the world itself is in a place where the economy, the, the population is increasing. Flying is becoming more, much more accessible to a lot of people a lot of airlines are flying more and the ability to offset the carbon emissions at the same rate as what they are burning is almost impossible so if you are thinking of the challenges that are plaguing the industry if there's something else that i've missed in this video please leave it in the comment section below i wanted to share this information with you because i feel like if you're an industry in the industry you should know about these things i hope that you found value in this one if you have don't forget to drop a like on the video and i'd love to see you in the next one